when I first met Rick, we talked about, he says, he can make a better sounding bass. And you know what? To me, it's not only just about the wood of the guitar, it's also about the character and the neck. To me, all that has to come into play. But when Rick brought the pickups, Walmart pickups, invited me to his house to listen to these pickups, so much different from everything else that I've used. I've had Fender pickups, the Mars Hills, all those other style of bass pickups. I've had uh, Bartolini's. But this J these Jason Waller pickups, just recently, just in my new recording on all this new album, BC and I just finished. So I'll put that sound up against any bass that's out there as far as quality, uh, texture, uh, real good quality, ground bass sound. You know, no, no hidden agendas here. Those are nice about these pickups. So I would recommend for any bass players in the house that really likes this sound. Right. Right. And uh, we also, uh, last week I met Bart from New York and he's got this beautiful 69P bass. And I wanted to touch it and he says, don't touch my bass. And it was okay. And I asked him what kind of pickups and guess what? He's got Lawlers on there. So good choice, Bart. Okay. Anyway, so there you go. There's our bass section of the moment. All right. So what I'd like to talk about now, we're just going to talk a little bit about some music theory, which is, you know, when you hear the theory, it's like, ah, this is a drag. It's boring. But let's just consider music theory as the language of music. Okay, for those of us who can speak another language. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the, the key to the whole game here is the major scale. That tells you everything you need to know. Everything you need to know. Okay. On the major scale, you notice that it's a C major scale. You've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And you see the spacing between. I'm sorry I'm talking so fast. I'm just, time's getting kind of close here. So between the first and second, you've got a whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. Okay. So you guys know that. You've heard the, the do, re, mi thing all your life. Okay. There's also chords that are derivative, derivative or derived from the major scale. So the first note, C, would also be a C major chord in the key of C. The second one would be a D minor. Third would be an E minor. Fourth would be an F. Fifth would be a G. Sixth would be an A minor. And the seventh would be a B minor 7 flat 5. Can you say B minor 7 flat 5? Good job, Steve. Okay. Anyway, that's the way the whole thing works. So any scale that you play in, the first chord typically is major, the second one is minor, third is minor, fourth is major, fifth is major, sixth is minor, seventh is minor, seven flat five. Regardless of the key you play in, it always works the same that way. Questions on that? Good. Anybody know what I'm talking about yet? Okay, now, also, let's talk about chord types. There's four basic chord types. There's a major, a minor, a diminished, and an augmented. Take the first note that we're starting on, which is C, go up to the third note, count the first note as one, count three, C, D, E. Got it? That's major third, three higher. Then go from C up five, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, one, three, five. If you do the same thing, we're starting with D, you'll get D, F, and A. That's a D minor chord. You do with E, you'll have E, G, B. And that's how this thing works. That's just that simple, okay? now. For those of you that have seen a chord, let's say if you're looking at some music or you're looking at a chart and you happen to see this C in the number six, you've seen a C6, right? You're familiar with what a C6 chord is? What it is is it's a major chord now adding the sixth note of the scale. C6 would be C, E, G, A. C major seven, which would be C, E, G, B. You kind of get an idea how this is working? You cool with that? Adam, you good with that? I lost you. All right, good. <laughs> okay, so that's how that whole thing works. There's a sheet there as far as chord construction that I put in there. You can see all the different chords and, and all the elements that make it up. Now, we'll be playing here in just a couple of minutes, but the cool thing about, or maybe not the cool thing, but as far as the guitar play goes, we only have so many fingers, so many strings, so we can only cover so many notes. So we have to pick out the money notes, the fat notes to really make it work. The piano player definitely has, he can go 10 notes, he's, he, he's provided he has all his fingers working on the guitar, so we have to be more selective. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. So we have to figure out what chord tones are going to really make the thing sell. When somebody's on stage and says, we're playing in A minor, what key is that? C? Okay, okay. C? Could it be F? Could it be G? And the re reason I'm asking this is that A minor is a relative minor to what major? It's C major, right? A minor in the key of G is the two of G. 
A minor the key of F is the three of F. So it's kind of understood when we say A minor, we're talking about A minor, D, or A minor, D minor to E, but it's kind of unclear. If, if you get with a bunch of guys that are somewhat more knowledgeable, they'll, they'll start like, well, what key is it, man? Okay, so just a heads up. Like, let's say like we're asking what key is, sometimes I'll get, well, the key is this. What key is that? E, e, right, E, right. But realistically, if like, let's say, for those of you who know, like in the key of G, there's one sharp, right? Okay. And the key of F has one flat, B flat. If we wanted to communicate keys, it would make more sense and would also be more accurate if we said something like this. Let's say if we said this is the key of C, there's no sharps, no flats. Sharps go up and flats go down. So if you ask me what key, let's say I ask Doc what key, he says G, and I say C, and he says G, E. So if he just went that, one sharp is the key of G. Done, we're all dialed in. If he said it was in one there, it's F, B flat, A flat. Okay, just a thought. Anyways, if you ever go to a concert and you see these guys doing fingers, they're not necessarily giving each other the bird, but what they're doing is they're actually talking keys. Okay, so that's what's going on there. There's three chord forms I want to talk to you about, which we use a lot. And I also want you to pay attention to what Buster's playing here. Buster is a phenomenal player, and he knows about finding the money notes in a chord. You'll never see, you very rarely see him play a full bar. He's always playing a couple, three notes, because he knows what chord it is to make it sound. Um, when we're playing a full bar chord, typically we're, we have redundant notes. We don't need that, especially when you got a bass player covering it for you. So let's think about now, so you're at a jam, you're playing in a band, you got a guy who's doing the vocal, and you got two guitar players in this case, so in this, in this situation, clearly Buster has got the vocal, he's the lead player. So my job as a rhythm player is to support what he's doing. Okay, so see this chord form I'm using here? There's a nine, right? Up to C. Okay. So what's happening here is I'm not playing the root note. Okay, this piece, this C9, sorry, this, this G9 has everything but the root note in it. Okay, because Doc's playing this. I'm just playing this. You hear what's going on there? Okay, okay, here we go. When I'm playing, the guy that I dial into, that I hook up with, is the drummer. That's the guy I'm playing with. So fortunately, my style and Steve's style work. So he's playing right on top of the beat. So I, I can lock in with him. If, I, if there's a drummer that plays a little bit ahead of the beat or behind the beat, I'm dead in the water. Because I just like to play on top of the beat. Okay? So that's why it works great for me. So typically when, you, when we're playing, let's say, uh, Thrill is Gone, A minor, is that what we do it in? A, a, a minor? Oh, okay, okay, we play in C minor. So typically, the, the bar chords, C, so the three, we got this. But you guys are familiar with that bar chord, right? Okay, so it, it, it sounds nice and dark, and okay, but we could also use a thing called a minor seven. If you take a look in there, uh, the, I think the, the very back, back sheet, what it is is, Okay, I've got the A minor seven. So here's here's the C major chord. Adam, you got this, right? Adam, you got this, right? C major chord. If you take the second finger, put it on A. Now it becomes an A minor seven. Okay, I'm just we're going to play Thrill Is Gone in C minor. We start C minor. So let me ask you this: If we're playing in C minor as the one chord, what key signature are we playing? What key is this actually? It's actually the key of E flat. That would be the signature. Okay, but we're playing C minor as the one chord, playing F minor as the, as the four chord, and the five chord is uh, what do you got? You got G, but we're also using a G sharp or an A flat. Okay, so let's watch. Listen to how they, I'll play both. I'll play the C minor and then the C minor seven. Listen to how they sound. Got it? Uh, Still is gone.
Okay, one more chord form, and then uh, we're just about done. It's a, it's a 13 chord. If you take a look, we have it's an A, an A13. The full form of this chord gets this. Okay, but I got a bass player playing this. This form actually starts out on the seventh. Sorry. You know how much different that sounds? too is that in playing the rhythm part um, do, do something with the vocal okay same thing so, so you don't struggle with the vocal yeah okay now, now you guys have probably seen people do this so this this is really not a good good technique okay ready am I am I killing him right now does that that doesn't work does it Okay, so that, that's called stepping all over the vocal, stepping all over the band. So clearly, if I'm going to do that, I mean, I need to be really much lower. But the only problem is, rhythmically, I'm not really adding anything. If anything, I'm taking stuff away. So if I'm just going, if I'm playing with the drummer, or I'm playing with the beat going. That, that gives him plenty of room, gives lots of space. So, or if I was playing. That'll work, but it has to be behind the vocal. We're real important about the balance and how that's working out.